Good afternoon, aloha friends out there at home. Thank you for tuning in once again. This is our third video from the Employment Readiness Program here at Army Community Service. I feel like with each video I do, I'm warming up onto bigger and better things. I'm gonna be doing podcasts, just kidding. This is Jessica Lagasse Simpson. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. So we are still talking about the federal resume because this concept of applying for a federal job is what I like to call a labor of love. You don't just sit down and 30 minutes later, boom, you have a federal resume. Oh no, absolutely not. Take it in snippets. And maybe now is kind of an opportune time to be working on this behind the scenes when you know we've been stopped from doing so many other things, but we're staying home trying to stay safe, then maybe this is the time to be working on this. So I'm hoping every bit of um, advice that I can share with you is gonna be helpful to you. So specifically, what are we gonna be talking about today with this federal resume? In our first video, we talked about what? Does anyone remember what we covered? We talked about getting in there and using the actual resume builder tool as opposed to just kind of doing your own private sector resume and uploading that. So we talked about that. The second video, we talked about the importance of the questionnaire, ominous music, the questionnaire. Today, we are gonna be talking about writing your federal resume in outline format. How many of you are familiar with Katherine Troutman? She's a huge name. She's out in Washington, D.C., and she's known in federal resume writing circles as the federal resume guru, if you will. So she actually invented the concept of 10 steps to a federal job, which is a class that we typically teach here at ACS. She goes around all over the world and trains other folks to be trainers on 10 steps to a federal job. So she is the one who has written the book, 10 steps to a federal job, as well as other federal assistance type books. Super, super big name in uh, the federal government. So Ms. Troutman talks a lot about this concept known as the outline format. Okay, so how important really is it? Let's talk about that first. You can do your federal resume, and to be completely honest with you, you could do it in bullets if you wanted to. Okay, and by bullets, what I'm talking about is in your part of your resume where it's the content, where you're describing what your duties were and what your accomplishments were for each particular position. I've known tons of people that have done it with bullets and that have managed to obtain a federal job. Okay, however, the preferred method, even though bullets are allowed technically, the preferred method would be to do it in narrative paragraphs, okay? If you all remember, the resume builder gives you a block of 5,000 characters where you can type what you did and your accomplishments. Do you have to use all 5,000 characters? Absolutely not. Some of us have, okay? Some of us are that detailed and descriptive because the idea behind the federal resume is to be detailed and descriptive. And there's a lot of things you have to cover. So bullets would be technically easier to read, boom, boom, boom. But the narrative paragraph concept is preferred in federal circles. And by narrative paragraph, I don't mean one gigantic 5,000 character block. That would be really, really hard for your reader to read and to process. They would feel like they would not be able to come up for air. Instead, small narrative paragraphs with some white space in between for easier readability so the human eyes can take a break. Okay, if this is still not clear, we're gonna look at some samples here in just a second. First, where are you getting the content for the write-up of the positions that you're including on your resume? So some of it's coming from here, some of it's coming from here, some of it may be coming from an old position description that you have, some of it may be coming from an evaluation or an appraisal that you have. It's coming from all sorts of different places. But this is how the federal resume differs quite a bit from the private sector resume. Some of it is going to have to come from your best tool, which is the job announcement. This is a snippet from a random job announcement that I've selected to make my case here. You're gonna scroll through that job announcement. I'm in the habit of printing out the job announcement for the positions that truly interest me. You may be someone who likes to work on your computer screen, whatever works for you. I tend to have it printed out. I've got a red pen, a highlighter, a, um, and I'm making notes on the side of it. Start with the duties or the responsibilities. That is what you will be doing at this position if you were to get hired for it, okay? So we're gonna start there. There's so much great wording that you can take from this. How many of you have heard when talking about the federal resume that you need to incorporate keywords and key concepts? 
Yes. Well, for those of you that are beginners, you're probably like, where the heck do I get these keywords and key concepts? Watch, and starting here, they're telling me what I would be doing if I get hired for this job. Maybe I've done these things. Maybe I haven't. In the end, I need to be qualified in order to be uh, selected for this position. But if I have done any of these things, I absolutely need to get this language in there. Let's take a simple one of the snippets. Provide assistance with hiring actions. I'm gonna take that exact wording, if I have done this in any particular position that I've held, and I'm gonna incorporate that into my resume. So I would change it to provided assistance with hiring actions by, and I'm gonna complete it. It's not enough to just copy and paste that bad boy in there. Provide assistance with hiring actions. What does that tell me? Show how you did it, supporting evidence. And I'm gonna do that with everything that's on here as long as I've done it. You want to be detailed and descriptive and show them how you did it. Continuing on, that's our duties and responsibilities. Qualifications, this part's even more important. Doesn't matter if you didn't do those duties before, okay? But this is important, you have to meet this. So look at every single job announcement as its own unique situation. This one, for example, says that you've got to have one year of specialized experience, one year. Let's define that, okay? 52 weeks, 40 hours per week. It's not one year of 50 hours a week. Excuse me, I'd like to take that back. It's not one year, 20 hours a week, meaning part-time. If it's 50 hours a week, that's fine. But 40 is the minimum that they are looking for, okay? They're looking to see that it's full-time experience. So that's why we go back to the importance of putting the hours per week in the actual resume. We talked about that in video one. Okay, so they're defining one year as 52 weeks, 40 hours a week, in one or more of the following. And then they give you all this great wording, preparing a variety of personal actions. Um, they talk about entitlements, pay, all sorts of stuff. You have to take this exact language and incorporate it into your resume and show how you did it, okay? So this is where it starts. This is where you're getting the keywords and the key concepts. Let's continue, because there's more. Part-time or unpaid or volunteer experience. It all counts. You've heard me say this before. If you have volunteer work that is relevant, absolutely include it and try to capture the average hours per week that you worked. Super, super important. Now, as we're reading through this job announcement for a particular position that interests us, we're going to start preparing our outline format, okay, that I mentioned earlier. If your job announcement is set up like this, I love it when this happens. They will flat out tell you, you will be evaluated on the basis of your level of competency in the following areas. And for that particular job, they've chosen four. Clerical, customer service, human resources, technology usage, and personnel action processing and record keeping. These are the core competencies of this particular position. When they set it up like this, to me it's like gold. They've given me a present. Because now, what I can do is, remember, in the content block of the builder, I'm doing narrative paragraphs. I'm choosing not to do bullets. I'm doing little paragraphs that talk about different things. And I've started plugging in things from my memory, from my heart, if you will, from my appraisals, from my PDs. But now I gotta bring this stuff in there too. They've told me they're gonna evaluate me on these things. If my resume is multiple pages long and I need for that reader to see these things and how I've done in them, wouldn't I wanna lead them to this information to make it easier? So I'm gonna take these four particular core competencies and I'm gonna start my little paragraphs with these words. I'm gonna put them in all caps. And then later when the builder is finished and I put it into a Word document, I'm gonna take those little subheadings, and I'm gonna put them in bold to give them some extra oomph, some emphasis. And now the reader's eyes, the HR person, the hiring official, they go right to these things that they're saying they're gonna evaluate you on. And I've got my nice neat little paragraphs with these as the headings. Still doesn't make sense? We're gonna look at example in just a second, so please hang on. Now, sometimes the setup is not as clean as this, because to me this is pretty straightforward. Sometimes the setup in the job announcement is a little bit more complex and they talk about these things called KSAs. Have you all heard of the KSAs? Knowledge, skills, and abilities. So sometimes this will be the setup. 
numbered with concepts. They're still core competencies, but these are truly your knowledge, skills, and abilities. So let's just pick a random one. Must be able to communicate effectively both orally and in writing. So clearly, number three tells me I'm gonna have to bring their attention to how I communicate. Well, I don't wanna be writing that whole darn phrase as my little subheading in all caps and bold, so I'm gonna take the main concept out of this. To me, it's communication. That's gonna be my subheading. And then I'm gonna take their exact wording and say, communicated effectively um, in uh, oral format by da 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 da, and in written format by da 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 da, and give some examples. Do you see kind of where I'm going with this? It's, it's kind of a fascinating concept. It's not easy, but when you do it once or twice, it starts to all just come together like a puzzle piece. All right. <laughs> Technical issue. Jeannie's saving the day behind the scenes. Ta-da! I didn't want you to miss out on this part, okay? This is so true to life. Technical difficulties happening behind the scenes. So this is a sample of the outline format. This is straight from the 10 Steps to a Federal Job book by Katherine Troutman. So this is one portion of this particular person's resume. I wanted you to see what this narrative paragraph concept with outline format looks like. So the part that you're not seeing is above here that shows the position title, the location, the hours per week, don't forget that, and all of that information. Then under that you would start with your little narrative paragraphs, white space in between each of them. Look how easy that is to read. Check it out. Security and anti-terrorism operations security support activities, leadership and accomplishments, administrative and support activities. So this is a completely different job than the one we just looked at here. But these headings, for example, would replace what this person has. Now, they did them in bold, which looks great. I might choose to do all caps in bold to make it stand out even more. And behind each subheading is the description of how that person achieved these things. I think it's starting to make a little bit more sense. So those key concepts, those um, headings, if you will, subheadings, came straight from that particular job announcement. Okay, one last thing I'd like to talk about. Um, I'm feeding you bits and pieces of a class that typically takes two, two and a half hours, but I want you to be well armed with your toolkit of tools for writing a federal resume. Accomplishment statements. Please don't have your resume just be full of duties. Duties are important. But if all you give the reader is duties, it tends to be very, very bland. And guess what? Someone always knows when you did a copy and paste from the position description right into your resume. And that can be pretty boring to read. Liven it up. You want your reader to know that you're a human being with flesh and blood and a passion for that particular career field. So amongst the duties, throw in some accomplishment statements because each and every one of you out there is passionate about your career field and you have made an impact in the things that you have done. Let your reader see that, okay? So for those of us that are clueless about how to write accomplishment statements, let me help you out a little bit. Um, I, I do feel that it can be a struggle. The folks that are really good at writing accomplishment statements tend to be military folks because they are always writing accomplishment statements for their EPRs, OPRs, their appraisals, their assessments. But the rest of us mere mortals, we have a struggle trying to put together accomplishment statements. So here's an easy formula. What you did, how well you did it, what was the impact or outcome? Okay, super simple. The impact, the outcome is your BAM factor. So if I say reviewed resumes, there's nothing exciting about that. It's a true duty, but what if I say reviewed 500 resumes in three months resulting in employment seekers finding, let's say resulting in 400 employment seekers finding employment within two months, something like that. I'm making up as I go, obviously, but notice I put in some numbers. I put in a time span, percentages, dollar amounts, if you save some money for your company or for your organization, numbers, all of this will help quantify. And I know we're very modest out there. We all say the same thing. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. No, it's how you're doing your job. So think about some of the impact that you've made and do a nice healthy balance between duties and accomplishments.
I wanted to thank you all for tuning in. Be safe out there and we'll see you for the next one. I'm starting to